How do you go from hundreds of bone fragments to 47 skeleton bones to a missing link that supposedly lived 3 million years ago named Lucy? Lucy fills the pages of our public school textbooks, standing out as the leading icon for human evolution. But is Lucy really a missing link to humans, or is she just an extinct 3.5 foot ape? Stick around to find out. In 1974, Donald Johansson found a small elbow bone in the Ethiopian desert. Looking around, he found several other bones that looked like they could be from the same creature. He later returned to uncover hundreds of bone fragments scattered along a hillside. Later, his team pieced together the hundreds of fragments into 47 skeletal bones. They believed that the creature was an adult female that weighed 55 pounds and stood 3.5 feet tall, not anywhere close to a human. But after gluing these hundreds of bone pieces into 47 parts and creating models of what they think the creature looked like, evolutionists came up with some surprisingly human-like creatures. Wow, how do you go from this, to this, to these? And they didn't even find any hands or feet with Lucy. And they certainly didn't find any eye whites, a feature that only humans have, and not apes. I wonder if they did this to make her look more human-like. In school textbooks across the country, Lucy is represented as a clear ape to human transition, walking upright, holding babies, and gazing intelligently as she walks. This teaching sows seeds of doubts in the minds of Christian students, leading them to believe that the biblical creation account is based on far-fetched fantasies. But is this really true? Is Lucy really our early human ancestor? Well, let's take a look at the evidence from head to toe. Starting with Lucy's skull, we really don't have much to go on. As leading paleontologist Dr. Leakey said, Lucy's skull was so incomplete that most of it was imagination made of plaster of Paris, thus making it impossible to draw any firm conclusion about what species she belonged to. When Lucy's actual skull bones are put together and the empty parts are filled in with what they imagine her skull looked like, she looks surprisingly similar to a modern bonobo. While we only have a few broken skull bones from Lucy, other skulls of Lucy's kind show that their spines entered into their skulls at an angle, just about like chimps, showing that she likely walked on all fours and not on two legs like humans. Next, we have the inner ears. Dr. Spohr, professor of evolutionary anthropology, has extensively studied the inner ears of various apes and humans. After studying Australopithecines, he revealed that the balancing system in their ears were the same as modern apes, enabling them to live in trees. Next, we have this vertebrae that was believed to be part of Lucy for over 40 years. Recently, scientists learned that it was actually from an extinct relative of the baboon. When Johansson first discovered Lucy's pelvis, he reported it was badly crushed with distortion and cracking. His team believed that it had been broken apart and then fused together during later fossilization, which caused it to be in an anatomically impossible position and to flare out like a chimp's pelvis. Their solution to this? Use a buzzsaw to cut it apart and piece it back together. After this pelvis reconstruction, they noted, it was a tricky job, but after taking out the kink of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Even evolutionists in the famous Human Evolution Journal have problems with this reconstruction, stating, We think that the reconstruction overestimates the width of this pelvis area, creating a very human-like sacral plane. Since 1995, evolutionists have been battling out Lucy's gender, with some even suggesting that male names like Brucey or Lucifer would better fit the fossil. Now we have Lucy's wrist. When looking at a cast of Lucy's bones, experts at George Washington University revealed that her wrist was stiff like a chimpanzee's. This enabled Lucy's wrist to lock in place for knuckle walking, just like most apes today. Another study noted, measurements of the shape of wrist bones showed that Lucy's type were knuckle walkers, similar to gorillas. Even the fingers of Lucy's kind have been shown to be curved and ape-like, best suited for swinging in trees. Next, we have Lucy's short little legs. Bill Jungers at the Stony Brook Institute in New York argued that Lucy's legs were too short in relation to her arms for her species to have achieved a fully modern adaptation to bipedalism. In other words, she wasn't built for walking. Other researchers have concluded the same thing. While a knee joint was not even found with Lucy, a different knee that was found one year earlier had been used to try to prove that Lucy walked upright. This other knee was found over 8,000 feet away from where Lucy was found, and over 200 feet deeper in the ground. Johansson's lead team member said this knee was human, not Abe. Most recently, a team of scientists from the University of Texas conducted 38,000 scans of Lucy's bones. After researching the different breaks and fractures, they concluded that she died while falling over 40 feet out of a tree while she was awake, even trying to break her fall. Lucy, a little 3.5 foot, 55 pound ape that supposedly walked on two feet like a human, died by falling 40 feet out of a tree. Made of hundreds of bone fragments glued together to make 47 parts, even accidentally including a vertebrae from a different species, do we really know what she was? 
Her skull, inner ears, locking wrist, curved fingers, and short legs reveal that she was definitely an ape. But that's not what evolutionists want you to think. Shown with human expressions, eye whites, which no apes have, and walking upright, they want you to think she was on her way to becoming human. They want you to believe that there are hundreds of Lucy's kind buried in the earth, as in this video where Johansson explains there are 400 Australopithecine specimens and marches an army of hundreds of complete skeletons across the screen. But what he doesn't say is that he's talking about 400 bone specimens, not individuals, and 35% of these specimens are just teeth, and fewer than a dozen are skulls, all of which have been pieced together using numerous broken pieces. Here is a picture showing the majority of this entire collection, sitting on top of a single table. If human evolution really happened over millions of years, wouldn't we expect to find more? With over 7 billion humans alive today, shouldn't the ground be filled with transitions of apes still evolving into humans? Even Darwin realized that this was a problem by stating, As by my theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the Earth? So, just what was Lucy? The answer is straightforward. Lucy and other Australopithecines are extinct apes, just like many other ape species that have gone extinct. She walked on all fours, ate the foods that apes eat, and lived among other animals that are similar to those that live around apes today. So, why do some evolutionists fight so hard to keep Lucy and other icons as supposed proof for evolution? Let's see what Donald Johansson, Lucy's discoverer, has to say about God and biblical creation. Darwin, if he were alive today, would probably be very happy with this poster. I want you to support science and reason. So get God's name off the money that we all worship and get in science we trust. I don't think we'll do that, but we do need to get that name off of our money. There is no question. And we have to understand that this is an exciting opportunity to be alive and not sit around and worry about some omnipotent being keeping score to decide whether we're going to end up in eternal ecstasy or unending damnation. So the problem is that people's prayers don't get answered. Why? Well, here it was in the New Yorker. God finds all the prayers of mankind in his spam folder. <laughs> so we now have an explanation. Is to reawaken, as the advert will say, a reverence. I'll, I'll use that word. I'll take that word. For the natural world and our place in the natural world. To respect the creativity of the true creator, Mother Nature. And of course, I thought I'd show you the great breakthroughs in science from Marie Curie to the great accelerators and how much has been accomplished in religion. <laughs> well, if you go to the Creation Museum, there she is. She's a four-legged walking quadrupedal knuckle walker because of Dr. Ham. I don't know what he got his doctorate in, but it may have been one of those things you get at Sears. Um, but there ain't no way that Lucy was walking on her knuckles on four legs. So a child goes in and sees this and is impressed by it. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? The truth is, God created land animals on the sixth day of creation right before he created man to rule over them. We were created in the image of God and not in the image of apes, out of the dust of the earth and given the dominion charge to rule over all of God's creation. That's why we put apes in the zoo and not the other way around. Humans are vastly different than apes in so many ways, many of which were made plain in this video. Our brains, however, stand out as the biggest distinction, being nearly three times larger than they should be based on our lineup with similarly sized apes. Our brains are also wired completely differently than apes in so many ways. Humans were wired by God with the intellect to rule the earth, just as we were commanded. We sing, worship, have ceremonies, pray, educate ourselves, and do so many other things that reflect the fact that we are spiritual beings and not animals. Following the genealogies in Genesis leads us back to the spontaneous creation of Adam on the sixth day of creation, just about 6,000 years ago. Then, about 4,400 years ago, the world was destroyed by a flood. 100 years later, humans were scattered around the world from the Tower of Babel. That's why we have so many different people groups today. We were just one race of people, but with minor variations based on the genes each group took from Babel and adaptations that have occurred since. Just like the Bible says in Acts, 
And he has made all nations of men of one blood to dwell on all face of the earth, ordaining four appointed seasons and boundaries of their dwelling. It's important to understand the significance of these two contrasting worldviews. Public schools teach students that they evolved from apes, and when they act like it, we hold them accountable like spiritual beings with a conscience and morality. Such a contradiction! The biblical account makes much more sense, that we are a special creation of God, created in His image to rule over the earth and to know and love God and our fellow man. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? See more on this topic and others at debunkevolution.com.